Welcome everybody uh, to uh, uh, this day's lectures. And we are beginning with Internet of Things Security Assessment by Ms. Asmita Cha. Uh, Ms. Cha works uh, as an Internet of Things Security Consultant focusing on embedded device security testing and research and Paya 2 India. She enjoys tinkering around with hardware, reversing and hacking, with your background in embedded development, she loves reversing firmware. Uh, she has also experience of giving talks, workshops, and training uh, at conferences like CPX360, NOCOM, and local InfoSec community meetups. Um, Ms. Joanna, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are attending this. So I will skip this slide as already introduction has been done. But yes, you can reach out to me, my email or at my Twitter handle if you have any questions further. So uh, today's agenda would be, we would be talking about introduction to IoT and why do we need IoT security? Then we will be looking around the attack surfaces which can be targeted and the pen testing approach and methods that should be followed even if you are a beginner, that would be helpful to you. And at the end, some, some of the basic demos. So uh, Internet of Things was coined by Kevin Ashton in 1999. And as per Wikipedia, it says, it's the network of physical devices, basically that connect and exchange data over the internet. If you see its uh, layered model, at the bottom layer, you have sensing devices, the physical devices that we see around that collect the data from our surrounding. The data that is collected has to be sent. So the sending of the data needs some kind of communication layer, the layer that can communicate that data to the end need. So there we need a communication layer. And then finally, we need something that can make use of the data, either churning out the analytics out of it or giving use end users some kind of better applications. So for that, we have management layer. Devices. This is the physical devices that you see around us. Generally, we have smart van, we have smart room, home, homes, we have bulbs, smart devices that we see that we see around us. And basically they collect the data for around us. And these hardware play a very critical role in the point of security that we will look forward for the today. The data that is connect, uh, collected by these devices has to be connect, communicated to end user. So Sometimes uh, if you see forward in this uh, uh, series of slides, we will looking in the different ways these IoT ecosystem get interconnected. So uh, one way is this, the devices collect the data, they send it to the gateway via the wireless protocol. It could be your Zigbee, LoRa, Bluetooth. And instead of gateway, it can also communicate directly to our smartphone via the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Then these main central devices, either smartphone or the gateway, collects the data and send it to the main cloud where the use of the collected data happens, where the management happens, where the application happens. And this data once get turned out, if you get some kind of output over here, that can be returned back to the sensor for some kind of another action via the same central node. The same could happen via your smartphone. Instead of gateway, it can directly, cloud can directly communicate to your phone and the phone can uh, respond to your devices. Next is, a, uh, in this case, what can happen? The devices can send the data to the central gateway. The gateway can send the data to the cloud where all the management happens. And once whatever the output comes, it can communicate to your mobile application. Other could be your devices can directly communicate to the cloud. So these MQTT, COPE, AMQQ, these are IoT protocols. And we will see how these different things that we see just around the devices, the communicating layer, the management layer, how they give us the path for attacking any IoT devices and how important it is to save and secure each and every uh, part of the ecosystem. So uh, if we see around the uses of IoT, it's almost many place, whether it is your smart home, your automation, your any healthcare supply chain energy today it's growing by many folds it's everywhere so by the data it says by 2025 there would be 75 billion devices 
and yes this is why we need iv security because if you see uh, i have taken this some of the statistical data from few of the sources as mentioned below and you can see how it say like 98% of the iot devices trap like is unencrypted and when it says data is unencrypted and if it get is snapped by some kind of uh, advisory adversary or any hacker your data is leaked similarly you have 57% are uh, have high risk severity risk 41% are vulnerable to exploit that can be exploited to for other uh, purposes and then 47% of the devices belongs to the cameras so be safe nothing is secure over here everyone is on network and it's very threatening to see the way it is increasing the way the attacks on the iot devices are increasing if you see many cases where it could be mirai botnet where one device is affecting one after the other you whether it is your in home thermostat whether the smart toys that are buying you are buying for a children or whether you have some kind of baby monitor it's you can case millions of case many cases regarding hacking iot so the question comes why do we need security because if the way the, uh, the use of iot product has used in our day to day life and everything we are using is connected at some point so we have to do the assessment at even at the start of the development so if someone of you is if any one of you are in the field of iot product development for you it's very important to decide before you design the architecture of your product please make sure to take security into consideration from start itself not at the end of the development because we had already seen previously what are the different things included in the iot network the devices the communication layers and those were the management if any part gets affected the whole ecosystem gets destroyed so it's very important and we have seen how a single device vulnerability in the single feature can can how can misuse your personal data it could be harmful to your industry i'll focus mainly on one of the latest research of ripple 20 this is because uh, uh, most of the time when the product development happens many we use most of the third party libraries or softwares and if its assessment is not done it's gone it may be risky for us so for example in this attack what was happened there was vulnerability in the tcp ip stack and this same this library was included was involved in most of the sectors as you can see over here almost these it means if they uh, and there were 19 zero days vulnerability so you can now figure out how much effect it can have on all these devices and similarly these attacks can grow by many folds if security assessment and security aspects are not taken into consideration at earlier stage so coming to attack surface when i say attack surface it means the the position the the thing which you can attack on in an iot ecosystem so first thing i'll take is the device hardware the physical device that we are using around us it could be your this smart cameras if you open these devices and if let's say if a attacker gets the access to these device and you can it can be teared down and if they get the hardware inside the devices that we call like uh, pcb of the device and on that board on that hardware you they they are there are a possibility to find many attack vectors for any attacker for example some of could be hardware debug ports so if you uh, uh, have studied about jtag about uart about spi so uh, these gives you to debug the device to even interact with the memory chip of the device and to get in fact uh, you can extract the firmware out of those things so if these things are left open it could be risky for your hardware similarly is that storage how you are storing your firmware or how you are storing your any important data because uh, if something is stored in let's say some kind of external memory so there are pretty good chances of extracting the data from that memory similarly if something is communicating on the bus those communication can be sniffed and we have encryption if you are storing something whether the data is encrypted or whether the communication happening your sensor or any devices on the chip on the uh, on the hardware are coming or encrypted 
authentication whether can anyone flash your firmware inside the hardware or or can anyone do anything with your hardware or is this some kind of authentication implemented and there are different kind of hardware interfaces that we implement on our device we have sensor interfaces these all can be an attack point for any attacker so security has to be considered for every aspect so so when we have devices similarly when these devices communicate to the gateway so this uh, hardware inside this gateway also matters. So if your device is communicating to gateway and the hardware of the, your uh, device is perfectly fine, and uh, though nothing is perfectly fine, uh, and your gateway can also, but if your gateway is vulnerable, then also it can cause damage to your ecosystem. Similarly, we have the communication layer. For communication, we had seen for device can communicate using many virus protocol. It could be a Bluetooth, Zigbee, LoRa, then uh, uh, devices can communicate to the cloud directly via MQTT Go. So if there is vulnerability in any of these related protocol related vulnerability, it could affect the communication. Someone can sniff the communication. If the, encrypt if the data which is being communicated is not encrypted properly, someone can get into the data or can do something if authentication is not implemented. So these kind of vulnerabilities, these kind of attack, uh, wireless protocol, the vulnerabilities in their implementation opens the attack surface for any attacker. Then you have cloud where the data goes and the processing happens, analytics happens, the storage happens. And again, at the same place, we have the same kind of attack vectors, whether the data is stored properly, whether communicated properly, how are APIs implemented, what kind of general cloud related you can see check all uh, related vulnerabilities that could be fine and we have to all these these attack vectors and similarly at the end we have user application we have web application we have mobile applications apps so if there is a, a vulnerability in their application if some data is hard coded inside a mobile app and if an attacker can reverse their mobile application they can indirectly uh, uh, cause the harm to your device. Maybe let's say if you your device is communicating to cloud and uh, and you have the credential of login of, of the cloud inside hard coded inside your app application. So if some attacker can reverse the application, get the credential and can finally affect your cloud end. Similarly, things are very interconnected. And yes, it's a lot. So let's get started. And uh, before starting, since we have less time and we have a lot to cover, so I would be here covering about the basic approach of almost uh, everything that comes in the IT security assessment and tools. I would, uh, um, I would not be able to go very in depth of the tools, but yes, I have given uh, good references links for each of them. And IT security assessment is a vast domain. It's not an easy task for us to test every aspect, like one person can test every aspect very good. So. It's in your hand. Uh, you can. Uh, I'll just give you all the glimpse of all the aspects. You can choose your field. Whether it you can choose to uh, do your hardware, go with hardware. You can choose to go with firmware. You can choose to go with the communication layer. You can choose to go with application layer. So uh, this talk, uh, I will be uh, giving a very brief glimpse so that you can get an idea of what all can be done under IoT security assessment. So when it comes to testing, test covers almost all these things. So this is from Fire2 that we generally, uh, this is how we test the product. And it's uh, so if you have an IoT device, uh, so it has hardware, it has some kind of firmware that is running inside it. It has to uh, implement upon whether it is authentication properly, all this thing. And then you have encryption. We have, you have a cloud side. You have user interface by which the user communicates. Then again, you have third party software that you might use in your application. And finally, the IoT protocols that are used to communicate your devices. So IoT security is not just a, any single area, it covers this whole domain. So you, uh, one could be either good at something, you, one could be good at application, other could be good at firmware. So, but it covers complete scenario. General process, how we, this is helpful mainly in terms of uh, 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 not hobbyist, but if you are working for some kind of client with your projects for IoT security assessment. So first, there is always a requirement gathering where we uh, gather the reports from the client. 
and then we decide the scope of work because uh, as we had seen there are so many targeted so for some client they might just be interested in the hardware security but might be they have a good uh, resource in their own company to test the other parts so they just might need hardware part similarly it some for some it could be just the application part so depending on the client requirement we decide the scope of the work then there is knowledge transfer about the device that is to be tested and how it is to be done the setup and all the stuff once these three are done from the client side and client and the person who is involved in testing then the tester goes for recon so identifying what are the possible attack surfaces that he can find on the devices after identifying the attack surfaces he could have different aspect either it could be hardware part cloud part mobile part so inside everything there are some kind of hard, uh, so, uh, firmware running some kind of software running some kind of protocol maybe bus communication related protocol or any uh, hardware related protocols similarly for cloud so when you decide your threat uh, attack surface you start attacking and testing the devices in each of these sector from hardware cloud and mobile and once the, all these your testings are done in your different with your different uh, attack vectors the very most important thing is reporting yes so if uh, any one of you are intending to be an iot pen tester in future or so or you are a very beginner and want to know so i would definitely say if you are working for some client and it's also useful when you are working for yourself even if you are doing the test and it gets failed even if it gets failed please do keep a record of it because it would be either be helpful for you in the future or it's also better for your client to understand what are the things that its uh, product can escape what kind of attack product can escape for or what are, what are the good points of its product and similarly you just uh, uh, you have you have, this reporting part is very important for uh, your client because that client might not be very technically expert in field of it security but you have to present your report taking into target what risk it could have on the device that he has given to you for testing so reporting do not most of the time we neglect this part but reporting is very important then you have once you give the report they fix the issues they may, the device may again come back to you retest re and then the this the process continues so uh, when it comes to approach so we'll start with attacking hardware part so uh, most of the time we don't have the hardware with us so it, it, this would be helpful uh, so even if you are want to get started with some kind of hardware and currently you don't have the hardware so uh, sometimes the devices have fcc id number so uh, this could be uh, this are mostly for radio based devices or the devices which are from us and th this is a, this is not the official website but a user friendly website for fcc id here you can put your fcc id number and you'll get all the internal diagrams the images and details of the device online so for example i had a device wink hub device uh, fcc id number was given on the back of the device i took that number i put on the website and i got the whole internal photographs so when i say recon it means identifying what are the possible attack vectors on my hardware so i would look for if there are some kind of debug ports or any memory chips available are there some sensors that are going to manipulate or some peripherals that are exposed what processor is used what are other components what are different test points so first of all whenever you get or you are about to dig into the hardware you need to first have a recon to identify the different components on the hardware and then i was i this is from the internal their internal image and i was able to find okay it has a nand flash it has diva port and it has uart port it means i can get some points on this device to attack so if you get some idea from fcc id number and it gets a very good uh, chance for you that without without procuring the device at least you get the idea of attack surfaces so you can do a hurry and go and buy a device and start attacking those surfaces but unfortunately more, most of the devices if do not have the fcc id number so no worries but yeah it gets a bit tricky so if you are successful in procuring the hardware device first thing you do is just tear down 
and start hunting. So basically, when I say start hunting, you need to look on the PCB, the image that we have just seen. You have this board like this. You have to start looking on the board. There are different test points on the board. You need to identify there are different there are different boards on the that you need to identify and then you have many chips on the device so you need to be, go through that chip you need to go through the data sheet of that chip i would say uh, uh, if you uh, are into hardware hacking data sheets are your best friend because you get almost many information that would aid you in hacking with respect to data sheet so you need to identify the components identify the trace points you need to check which pin of the chip is connected where on the trace point can you find any traces for debug port can you find the connecting connectivity between the debug port of the memory chip and your uh, device and if there are some kind of crypto based device so you have to completely analyze the pcb and if you are any suspective test points you need to start your get ready with your tools and start testing that are is my what i'm suspecting is correct or wrong so for performing your hardware attacks there are some very uh, tools that you should have so digital multimeter the very and the most important tool that uh, you must have so this is uh, from the attacking perspective of the hardware i would say this is very useful when you are trying to find basically uh, what are the different uh, voltages on the different points you you would it would be helpful to you in measuring the continuity so if on a let's say if on a chip you are successful in finding that the pin number one of chip is my debug port related pin and you want to check that whether that pin is connected on the pcb to some extent or not so and you see many test points on the pcb so this multimeter can help you in checking the continuity similarly you have usb uart serial adapter so uh, basically uh, the embedded devices that we generally see around us do not uh, cannot directly communicate to the uh, our usb so uh, they have most of the time for debugging they have a, a protocol they have a, a, a uart port that has serial communication and to able to make that uart communicate with our laptop we need to use an adapter in between so what it does you have this connects to the uart of the embedded devices and it connects to your host machine so this enable you to communicate between your attacking device and your host machine and then you have multi protocol adapter this is useful when uh, I have given links for every every so you can refer it later also. So this is useful when basically uh, embedded device can communicate over different protocol. It can be UART, it can be SPI, it can be JTAG, but it's not possible and it's not feasible to get uh, adapter for each kind of protocol. So for that we have multi protocol adapter that can adapt with different type of protocol and can make you uh, able to communicate your attacking devices with your host machine. And we have logic analyzer. So if you wanna, if you don't know anything about protocol, and if you just wanna see the sniff the communication between two points or between two devices that is happening, so you can just uh, it just captures the signal whatever is passing between the two points, and it shows you on the graph. And later you can decode it accordingly as per the protocol if it is standard, or you need to decode yourself with some kind of proprietary protocol. So this logic analyzer is very useful too. So JTAG scanner, sometimes when you identify the port, it's become difficult as there are so many uh, trace points. So for that, there are some kind of auto, auto, um, automatic scanning that they do. So JTAG is kind of, I would say, a debug port that would give you the access to the internal of the memory chip. So if you get access of the JTAG on your hardware, it's a big hooray for you it's a, if you get the JTAG interface. So through which you can communicate with your device and extract the firmware. Uh, change the memory data within the device. So these tools help you in identifying those auto scanning those JTAG ports. Uh, and this is chip whisperer. I have just mentioned here for beginners, those who are beginners and you want to start get it started with on the hardware attacks like side channel attacks and fault injection attacks, where the changes could be done by uh, by analyzing of the power analysis, electromagnetic fault injection. So basically, like you can have, there are many tools available for it, but just to get started, uh, this one I found good. So I put it over here. So when it comes to attacking hardware and you see the general setup, 
for general setup, you have basically the target device that you want to attack on. You have some kind of interfacing device because your target device cannot talk to your host machine directly. So you need some kind of interfacing device or any attacking device that you want to communicate with the target. And then this interfacing device communicate to your host machine. So before doing any connection on your external, on your target device, make sure any external device that you are connecting to the target device make their voltage level. So every device has certain voltage levels. Some works on 3.3 volts, some has maximum 5 volts, some has 1.8 volts. So if uh, make sure to make their voltage level match their voltage level. This you can do using level shifters. And other point is if you are connecting any external device with, with your target device, make their ground point common. So and you do the connection. So but on the target device, you will hunt for your attack vectors. Like you look for debug ports, your memory chip, your sensor, your test points, and so on. And similarly, when it comes to interfacing, you have multi protocol adapters, you have logic analyzer that basically is connected to your target device, fetch the information from your target device and gives to the host machine where the software running inside the host machine, the frame, there are many frameworks available that runs inside your host machine to process that data coming and give you some kind of user readable understanding. So this is how overall setup, a very general setup, this is uh, happens. Your target device, you have got the interfacing device, and you got some kind of framework to run those interfacing devices. So when it comes to attacking device, it can be either logic analyzer to sniff the communication. It could be multi-protocol adapters to uh, communicate with certain communication protocol, serial converters. You can have even you can have the Raspberry Pi over here and you can uh, attach different you can run several attacks using that on your target device. So you can have different tools over here. Similarly, for host machine, you need some kind of tool specific to the kind of interface you are using to make that process understandable for us. So when you attack the hardware, what do we expect? So it, I, either from the debug port, you directly get the root shell of the device that, of your embedded device. So you directly get, you can, if, if it's running some kind of, let's say OS, your device is ha having uh, OS based firmware and you directly get into it and you, you just get the whole internal file system of your firmware. You get to interact, you get to, uh, you get to even take out the firmware and then you, you can, extract the firmware, you can sniff the bus communication and get the sensitive information on the hardware. If some device is having, if there is any memory chip on your hardware and some data is hard coded, you can use your tool um, from the hardware attack, you can extract those hard coded data. Similarly, there are many crypto modules implemented on the hardware crypto chip. So there are attacks to break those crypto algorithms. And you can even uh, patch the device with the uh, new and vulnerable firmware if the security is not implemented properly on it. And you can make the device to work not in the way it should work. So you can have like denial of service and you have, you can manipulate even the sensor data. So from the hardware perspective, so you can see if in your IoT ecosystem, if the hardware had so many, if if out of so there are many attack vectors related to it i have just mentioned few of them and if any of these things can be vulnerable it can directly or indirectly dis, uh, disturb your whole ecosystem the next part is firmware firmware is something that is running on your hardware that's the, that's the it's the main business logic of your device it's the main logic that runs everything that makes possible everything so when you have to test the firmware in that case first you need to identify what kind of firmware the device is having, whether it is OS based or whether it is bare metal. And then you need to check if the firmware is encrypted. In case your firmware is encrypted, it gets a pretty tricky. You need to first decrypt the firmware. Decrypting firmware could be uh, in many ways. It could be either uh, there could you need to check the previously non encrypted release or any transition version of the firmware from there you can uh, reverse that firmware and reverse this uh, encryption algorithm. Other could be if the encryption is done via the hardware then hardware attacks like side channel attack can help you in finding the key of the encryption 
and then other could be you can look into the hex editors you can open your binary into the hex editor you need to it it's very tough and finding the patterns to identify those uh, encryption patterns and if in case your device is having a bare metal firmware in that case it means it does not have a os it, uh, in that case you don't have that much tools available with you for that you need a lot of manual work so you need to first identify what kind of controller are you using you need to look into the data sheet of the controller then you need to identify the what architecture it is having what is the memory map of the controller then using those information you can load uh, those into the binary like either gaidra or either pro then you can use the real time analysis using the debugger and then if uh, even if your uh, in this case bare metal even if your hardware is not present so you can use uh, tools like unicorn for partial emulation so this unicorn tool uh, you can let us go and dig deep into it so it it it, it can also help you like it's for cpu emulation it supports arm mips uh, uh, and many architectures and uh, you can even do the partial emulation of your firmware and if in case you have a os based firmware so a good chance to reverse so you have good chance to attack that use because there are many tools available so one could be your hex jump you can open it in your hex editor like uh, there are two types you have static analysis and you have dynamic analysis of firmware so when you do the static analysis of the firmware in that you do not perform any runtime activity you just analyze the behavior of the firmware its binary uh, its decompiled version its decompiled part to identify what uh, and looking if you are able to extract the firmware hunting around it files to find some kind of important key so it's nothing in runtime you can you are just analyzing it statically so for that uh, different tools come that hex editor you can open it sometime you can identify the pattern between them and can infer some from it similarly you have benwalk benwalk is a great tool if you have a os based firmware it can extract the whole file system it has many you can see whether your firmware is encrypted or not using its uh, property entropy you can calculate its entropy uh, you can extract you can uh, disassemble there are many features uh, uh, if you are looking for from the reservoir reversing do go and check out uh, uh, binwalk about the binwalk tool and how it how does it work and um, it it uh, so it, most of the time like it it will give you complete extraction of your firmware and uh, once your firmware gets extracted and there are many files inside it so for then you load it into the tools either gaidra or ida pro or radare also you can use and you can find uh, you you need to because uh, when you have the binary of the firmware you don't obviously you don't have that source code and you don't have everything the source code available with you so to reverse the firmware you will open it in the tools like uh, gaidra you so uh, i reverse the assembly part then uh, this also helps give you the decompilation part that helps you in reversing you uh, link to these to identify any kind of suspected uh, vulnerabilities then you have firm worker uh, this tool helps uh, because this tool is very helpful because uh, it gives you the scanning of almost all the different suspected files that you can have so if your uh, fi um, uh, file system is having any kind of password files or any kind of uh, so if it has some kind of password file it will tell you the name of file it will tell you any kind of certificate file any kind of file that is related to some kind of uh, services that can be attacked so it it's so this is very good after uh, uh, you can use always use firm firm worker to give because it it since once you get the file system there are many files inside it and it's uh, pretty difficult to go manually one by one into each file and identify every file so it's always good uh, you can use tools like firm worker and uh, you can yes get at least the idea what kind of files are present inside the file system so that you can so if you here you can see there is web servers running light http dh so you can uh, get the idea okay now i need to just go with the particular set of binary and you can go ahead with that and other is a uh, fact tool it it give you the web based uh, gui and it's a uh, since i have very less time i'll just cover it quickly so uh, it has uh, the fact tool 
and uh, you can try this out. Uh, it, it also gives you very graphical representation, the file system. Uh, it can also extract your file directly. So uh, do check it out. Then you have, we have exploit firmware auditor. Its community version is free. And uh, you this also, you just need to load your firmware inside it. You can see the graphs. You can see what a different kind of file system inside it that can be attacked. If like, let's say there are many uh, things that an attacker can do by manipulating the configuration file. So you could see what are the configuration files. Similarly, you can see the database files, the files that are really, that are having some kind of password. So it has many other features that you should check it out. So in sh short, the tools, there are so many tools that I have discussed here. So I have provided the links for each. And if you are interested for the firmware reversing part, uh, have a look at them and you can it, it's very useful for you to get started with, with it and you can also refer to our blog where we have like a whole it security series blog and you can look into those blogs to get a better idea and how because every step by step things have been mentioned there for dynamic analysis so in case of dynamic analysis you i you analyze the behavior of the firm there in the runtime so uh, if you are, how, how does it work? If there could be some kind of attack, like if you want to fuzz the device, uh, you want to uh, debug the device, you want to do some kind of uh, exploits if there are some buffer overflow related attacks and you want to perform exploits via it. This dynamic analysis helps you in that. So few of the tools that can help you for dynamic analysis, GTB multi-arc obviously for uh, uh, debugging, you have KMU for emulation, uh, you have Permadyne, uh, unicorn chilling and you can have there are some fuzzing tools like redamsa and boo fuzz so these tools can help you in your dynamic analysis uh, what could you get from the firmware uh, if you are successful in attacking firmware so you get uh, to hunt around the file system inside it you get to if there are some proprietary binaries that the vendor has implemented you get the opportunity to reverse that binary and get out, uh, get some valuable information of it. You can get, you can unearth many other attack vectors with respect to those reversing. Then you can find if there are some kind of hard coded sensitive informations in the firmware. This thing uh, that generally used to happen. So if uh, developers generally, when they develop their firmware, they generally leave the hard coded passwords and keys inside it, and it gives the very good path for the attacker. So when you do the assessment, if you are doing the assessment, you should look all all these files. You should try these attacks to check if your the device that you are assessing can um, can is good for it or or otherwise you need to report to your client. So you have configuration files, then you have certificates, and uh, yes, you can perform debugging and these you can just patch with even the vulnerable firmware. So uh, when it comes to uh, radio attacks, in this case, uh, uh, so this is the communication, uh, the communication layer. So you have Zigbee, you have Wi-Fi. So in that case, you first need to identify at what frequency the device is operating, how does it normally operate, and what are its communication modes, uh, some kind of regulations related to radio if uh, that are mostly there. You need to check out before attacking these devices. And yes, then you can just set up your tools. You can uh, capture the radio signals. You can reverse the captured signals and then perform the attacks. Just make sure about the regulations in case of radio attacks. Uh, and then uh, different tools that could be software defined radio. So uh, hardware tools that you can use for hardware is like HackRF, RTLSTR. So these have their own different features of different frequencies and uh, other aspects. For software, for analyzing, uh, for and in, uh, for the software part, you have these uh, GQRS, GNU radio that are most famously used in case of radio. Then in case of BLE, uh, for sniffing tool, we have Uber Tooth One. This helps you in uh, sniffing part of the uh, BLE communication. Then you have uh, Texas Instrument Sniffle uh, uh, that helps you to sniff the communication. Then you have CSR Bluetooth adapters. Uh, that's generally used if you are trying to, you can use this tool directly. Uh, you can also refer to the blogs. Uh, uh, here, blogs, I think I have mentioned, yes. So you can also refer to this blog where you, you can see the 
you, uh, how this has been used and you can op you can connect to your host machine and then perform some uh, cert certain attacks to start with so some of the uh, uh, Ms. Cha, you have 10 more minutes for your uh, lecture yeah yeah thanks for notifying yeah, so uh, so this for when you talk about the tool you have exploit framework uh, so basically you have the hardware part now you need you have the tools now you need you need some kind of framework that can help you in communicating with the device that, that can help you to you to control the device so these are the uh, frameworks that you can look around for the BLE attack as similarly for G, uh, Zigbee you have uh, killer B exploit frameworks Zigbee auditor and you have many fuzzing tools and yes wireshark is most important to sniff the signals and th this is the most important tool you should know about wireshark so you can sniff the data you can scan the network you can replay your attack whatever so you have to sniff the signal you can reverse the signal what data is being communicated you can replay those attacks if you can capture the signal you can replay that those signals you can deny you can perform denial of service if any communication is happening and if an encryption is not very proper, you can decrypt the communication. You can perform fuzzing on the device and you can get the control of the device. Even if there's uh, some kind of update via over OT update, over the air update, you can uh, perform your, uh, you can use these radio attacks to uh, attack them. So uh, when it comes to IoT protocols, you have different uh, protocols uh, that is used to communicate to your device so it could be your mqtt it has scope so you need to identify the protocols there are documentation standard documentation for the protocol so from the uh, documentation you need to identify on which port that uh, communication happens if there is some kind of standard protocol on a standard port it is happening you can identify it using network scanner you can capture the packet analyze it and if the and then you can sniff the packet you can under through documentation you can understand its packet structure and once you sniff that communication either through wireshark or then uh, by analyzing the packet structure you can reverse those structure and get the understanding of the data that is being communicated so some of the uh, important tools for i2 protocol i could say these wireshark Exploit framework and this. So if you see, the exploit framework is having the uh, plugins for most of the like MQTT protocol. So you have uh, Zigbee, Zigbee Auditor for hardware protocol. Also, it has I2C. Here it is scope. So you should have a look up around it. And yes, in case of protocols, also you have you can scan the uh, device, you can sniff the data, you can replay, you can perform the same kind of tasks and decrypt the communication if you are successful in decrypting it you can uh, get uh, get uh, credentials for other devices and you can uh, get access to other devices via do those through which it is communicating and if one protocol is affected you can di indirectly uh, affect the different protocol that is attached to it you can perform fuzzing get the control of the device and uh, at the end you have the user application so in this i would not be uh, getting more into mobile and web part of how because it's very you can pause and um uh, and in our case we also have load we have like special software team for these user application but yes there are many uh, uh, most of you if you're from the software side you can reverse you know you would be knowing about reversing of mobile applications web applications so yes but in the iot ecosystem this point also matters a lot so you can, uh, if you reverse your, let's say, application, you can get reverse your sensitive data. You can either get some kind of backdoor, so some kind of, let's say, command injection. So if your uh, device is expecting input from the user, and if you can send some kind of crafted payload, like if it is not sanitized, if it has not sanitized the input from the user, and if you can send uh, some kind of crafted payload, uh, it can give uh, other kind of vulnerability. So it can maybe give you the remote access to the device. You can open your remote terminal on the device and you can uh, uh, control it remotely. So similarly, if there are some kind of data hard coded, you can get it. You can go to, uh, get a remote code execution on the device. You can find the ex uh, exploits around that. Then you can obviously denial, perform the denial of service. And if there are some kind of over the air updates, you can get the opportunity to attack if there's some kind of vulnerability, even in the user application. 
And yes, there are, there are not, I would not say there are many standards, but yes, there are many security guidelines and best practices that you should look at. So you have OWASP top 10, you have IOXT Alliance, IoT SCS, ETCI, GSMA IoT security guideline, and IST. So these things you can, you can just have the, look at these guidelines that will give you explain you in better way of what exactly should be taken care of when you are looking into uh, security aspect and even they have very good questionnaire kind of thing where if you are accessing a certain part of the IoT ecosystem, what things you should take into consideration. So yes, since it will be, I have a, a very less time, just one hour, so I had to cover it very quickly. Uh, I was not able to go in depth, but I have given you link and I just hope you got a little bit glimpse about it so that you can uh, definitely choose your interest, what interests you. And uh, yes, you can uh, get started. So before uh, I'll just have a quick demo. I uh, I have, I think 15 minutes. So I'll, I'll just take, I think uh, we have 10 minutes. We should have 10 minutes for Q&A. So I'll take two videos for your demos. So the first demo would be about the firmware extraction from the JTA. So in this case, what happened, uh, uh, just this is if you are a beginner. So I just uh, did it on a D exploit diva board. That that is a vulnerable board specifically crafted for uh, uh, IoT attacks. You can perform different attacks and test this, uh, and you can play around with this. Uh, and this bus auditor I used to identify. This was my target device diva board. And on the diva board to identify the JTAG interface, I used this bus auditor tool. So it does the scanning and identifies where are the JTAG ports on my device. After I was able to identify the JTAG interface, I connected the JTAG interface to the multi-protocol adapter, Exploit Nano. Once the connection was done, I uh, used the Exploit framework to communicate with the JTAG interface and extracted the firmware out of it. So, and yes, you can also uh, use the multimeter to find the JTAG instead of the automatic scanner, but this is a bit uh, uh, lengthy, I would say. So for that, before extracting the firmware, I had to find at like at which address I can extract the firmware. So for that, I had to identify the data sheet of what the Diva board is having. So the board which I had, it has this, it has this microcontroller. I went to Google. I checked the, I googled the data sheet of the controller. After checking the data sheet, I had the flash memory address, and I just did the connection. It was my multi-protocol adapter, and this was the board. I connected the respective pins of the JTAG and connected to my host machine. So I'll just run this demo. So here you can see, I, I, so before connecting to JTAG interface, you need some kind of configuration file. Uh, that can help you to communicate. There is a software, OpenOCD software that will help you to communicate with your uh, JTAG interface. So for OpenOCD, with OpenOCD, you uh, so with OpenOCD, you get these things and you connect to OpenOCD. And OpenOCD basically gives you listen on the either GDB 333 or the Telnet. So you can communicate with the device. You can directly, uh, that uh, OpenOCD has the command to dump the image of the firmware. So you can just dump image is the command. It would be the file name. And then the address where we had seen for the flash memory. And then the length of the, uh, the flash memory. So it was able to like dump the uh, firmware from the device. So through tel Telnet, you can just uh, close that uh, through the open OCD and you can now analyze the firmware that you have extracted. You can see the data compute over is an unencrypted. You can easily, it's, everything is in plain text. So this should never happen when you are designing the, you can use a hex editor tool called bless I have used here. So you can see the
So you can see those uh, the, everything that you have got in the file. And even in this tool, there is a feature that you can search for something, you can replace something, you can patch your data. And if your device reflashing is not done correctly, you can reflash your uh, patch data into the device. So uh, I'll skip this uh, uh, calibre. Now it's time for Q&A. Or do I have five minutes with me? Uh, well, ideally, we would open for questions. But okay. uh, three more minutes, uh, if you want to conclude your observations. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just uh, I'll skip. I had many demos, but I'll show you one related to just a firmware analysis part. A very basic tools that you can use for it. So I'll just or I'll just use one IoT protocol related demo. So in this case, what happened? Uh, a device is communicating, or when a device is communicating over the MQTT protocol, and how do you wanna? Uh, and if it is even if it is authenticated via username and a password, and but you want to check these, uh, so uh, uh, what's happening and what's the so data is being transferred. So this attack is about that. So if you'll just so basically uh, in short, MQTT protocol you can say a broker type of uh, uh, it has a relation. So there is a broker in between that takes the data sub, uh, that takes the data from sender. It like something gets subscribed to it, and that is gets subscribed, gets published, uh, and something publishes to the broker and the data is transferred via the broker. And if there is uh, authentication in, and, and every communication happens over the topics, and if the communication is, is even if they are implemented the authentication, they can be broken. So I have used here exploit framework tool. And uh, this has uh, many uh, applications, uh, pl plugins for all. So I would be just using for MQTT. So here I'll just, uh, this is generally uh, this uh, running on my local host and it is just subscribing to a topic. So subscribing to a topic, it means you need to get about, know about what data is being exchanged on that topic. And here it says your, it is not authorized. It means I need some kind of authentication. So uh, I use something to uh, crack auth tools, a uh, plugin of the MQTT to crack the authentication. And it's, uh, you can see it's a, uh, application you can for brute forcing you can provide your own password file inside it and you can you i just guessed is to user id to be as admin and for brute forcing you can provide a password file so it's just you uh, and password and this is generally just a password file that was there So I just provided the password list and the guest password and you can see it was able to crack. So even if someone says that on the IoT protocol, we have implemented the authentication, but if it is not implemented properly or it is such universal password that can be easily guessed, your device is still like you can still crack it. And now you can use the same username and password to get the topics uh, from where you subscribe. So I will just uh, fast forward this video and it's, you are just subscribing it and the same topic. I have used same username and password that it was cracked. So now if you see, instead of now not apply, we can see all the topics that it was subscribed to. So this is how 
even if you are doing security just for the security uh, sake. Uh, I'll just say not to do that. Please take your security importance in the start, not at the end. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And yeah, you're, I'm open for questions now. Thank you, Ms. Jha, for uh, your informatory presentation. Uh, so let's start quickly with the questions. Uh, the first one says, um, it's a well-known fact that even mobile cameras are hacked and turned on without even turning on the LED attached to that. So how can we check our device and remove that back? Uh, can you please repeat the question? I think through network issues, I was not. Yes, it was a, a big one indeed. Uh, it, it's a fact that even mobile cameras are hacked and turned on without even turning on the LED attached to that. So how can we check our device and remove the bug? So uh, in that case, then uh, they are, I think, uh, I think the question here asked over is uh, even if the mobile lens is not attached, it, the mobile camera gets hacked, right? Yeah, so uh, in that case, I would say it's, uh, it, it's again related to uh, the development point because uh, it's not just about the lens being connected to the camera. It's also about the, uh, uh, the, the network over which it is getting communicated to. So if there is some kind of uh, any issues, if there's some kind of issues even in any part of your either cameras, uh, uh, because sometimes what happens, even if one vendors uh, a vendors release a series in a same series, and if one part of that uh, camera is uh, 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 find to be defective on uh, or vulnerable on one side, it can affect on the series of the same vendor aspect. Because for some cases, though they say they are doing some kind of good encryption, but uh, they use the same kind of encryption tree for the series of the same devices. So generally, uh, it's not about just a, a camera getting to lens, but yes, it's about the whole the network in which your device is communicating. So if your device is communicating uh, through the gateway, there could also be problem with your gateway. So there is uh, getting chances of uh, the devices which are connected through that uh, network can also get hacked. Uh, thank you. The next question says, uh, please share your thoughts on some ways in which end-to-end -end security can be enabled in IoT setup. Um, it's uh, difficult, but yes, I would say it's uh, only possible when we take care of it during the start, before the start of your development. So if, even if we, when you are designing the architecture of a new product, please take security at start. And when it comes to end to end part, uh, it's very uh, difficult because there are many things related. Supply chain is related in between. So you have to uh, uh, make sure your if this is why people do not take security very uh, priority because uh, it takes a lot of effort and time. So you have to make sure, uh, even if you're sending for the manufacturing, there's the, to which the person you are sending, how the security is taking at, taken care at that point. If you, are, uh, if, if you are developing and producing some product in the market, you have to make sure you, have, you provide um, uh, updates frequently so that if you fire and keep open your product, accept the uh, vulnerability that are discovered by the researchers uh, because they do work for you and they find a bug in your code and they report to you. So please uh, take care of those uh, uh, reports and patch the vulnerability and update your user regarding the same. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next one is, um, well, it's a question regarding regulations. Uh, are there any regulations uh, around IoT um, or is it covered by standard cyber laws? Um, yeah, uh, and also are there any specific laws and some examples if legal actions are taken for hacking IoT? Uh, for uh, regulations, uh, recently I had read news in which the regulations were being, I don't exactly remember the name uh, right now, but yes, uh, but currently it's not very well established reg any standard regulations for all these things. Uh, where is legal is concerned, it's related to some kind of, uh, depend on what kind of device you are hacking. If it's general, some kind of personal, and it's not something very government related, it might not affect the hackers anyway. Uh, but again, uh, it depends on what kind of hacking has been done. 
but uh, for kind of standards and regulations they are still being in process i think because uh, it's it's in process but uh, it's still not completely uh, over there uh, the next question says, uh, if you can share some uh, best open source simulation tools or test bands, which can help in IoT security research. Uh, test beds, uh, uh, I don't exactly meant by test beds. Uh, so uh, simulation tests, uh, I think I didn't get the question correctly. Yeah, uh, it's quote by quote. If you can share some best open source simulation tools or test beds, yeah, which can help in IoT security research. Uh, so, uh, as uh, for open source simulation tools, I would say, uh, so I don't uh, really get here the point about test beds, but yes, for testing of, let's say, if you are testing some firmware or a firmware of a hardware. So there are some emulation tools like uh, uh, like Unicorn, Chilling, Kemu that you can, even if you don't have the hardware, you can emulate those firmware and you can perform the testing about that. And there are also emulation tools coming up related to uh, um, uh, uh, site and attacks. It's not the emulation tool, but uh, how you can trace the power analysis those are that. But in case of emulation, I'm currently aware of these emulation related to firmware part only. Uh, 